Our class is brilliant, highly intelligent. Endearing, kind. We are driven. We are fun loving. Our class is weird. Our class is really weird. We have a lot of weirdos in our class. The ALC retreat was probably one of my favorite moments of this whole entire year-long process. Uh, first of all, it gets you, pushes you out of your limits, really challenges you mentally, and then you're around 30 strangers that you really need to connect with and become good friends with to go through this process. There was a high ropes portion of it, which I've been on high ropes before, so it really wasn't getting me outside of my comfort zone, but. Most people have not. Program days were wonderful. I feel like I, I know my city better now than I ever have before, and I feel prouder of the city than I ever have before, of all the great things that are happening. Infrastructure day was really fun. I mean, they're digging a 30-foot tunnel under us right now, and nobody really knows about it. You think you're special, you think you're smart, you're a leader at your own company. Then you go and meet this class of all these amazing people. Then you go on our class days and you meet um, people like Darren Babcock and, uh, and, and everyone that we met with who uh, are just absolutely inspirational. Rose Porterfield Group uh, does an executive coaching program. So you go through, you take a few tests, uh, it's judging you and grading you on different components of your personality and then they come in, they sit you down and talk you through what the results are. It's based on a CEO level and I think it was the thing that I was probably the most excited about. The Road Rally video assignment was basically we were given a genre um, with a scavenger hunt of different historical sites throughout the city that we'd have to research and then go throughout. For instance, mine was sci-fi. We did a Back to the Future theme. Our team was assigned the horror movie genre, which we thought would be kind of difficult, so we just did something Scooby-Doo. We were assigned Spaghetti Western, which was a unique opportunity learning what a Spaghetti Western was, which I didn't know. The year was 1908. Flood came, Trinity River went crazy. The Road Rally Trophy is a legendary reward that people get. Only the most deserving people can have it. It is supposed to be held by the team that wins it, but it is often stolen and shows up in different random places. It showed up at a Stars game, I believe. It showed up at a Christmas party. I think it showed up on a couple vacations. We were having our programs and all of a sudden kind of looked up and somebody had hung the trophy from Fishing Line and it was just sitting above us. Ashley took it to her wedding, was drinking champagne out of it. I do not, I don't think anyone knows where the Road Rally trophy is. Really, the, the Road Rally trophy is, it's all in here. The real, the real trophy is in your heart. The best part of it is watching the class grow together, finding out who the jokesters are, finding out who the total, you know, straight line business, keeping in between the ditches folks are. It's just been fun to watch the personalities blossom and then let everybody lets their guard down and everybody just kind of settles into their roles and, and the next thing you know you start setting records on raising money for fight night and killing a project like this. We had a, a fantastic opportunity to work with Cornerstone Baptist Church and with Bike Friendly South Dallas. Two groups of amazing people um, that, that have a heart for this community and really were committed to uh, making things better here. The reason why I um, founded Bike Friendly South Dallas was because I wanted to show our community that we don't have to sit at home and we don't have to walk and we don't have to wait on city transit if we are provided a bicycle. Down here it's transportation, it's healthy living, it's you, you teach, you get a kid in here doing bicycle maintenance, he's learning communication skills, he's learning to be on time, he's learning promptness, he's learning um, ethics, he's learning a bunch of things 
while he's working on a bicycle. Realize that we're in a neighborhood that uh, has upward of 90% children without a father in the home. Um, we have a lot of health disparities that are related to the diet and exercise. And uh, Bike Friendly's mission is really to address those particular needs of really teaching individuals how to be healthy through riding. And they certainly needed a location. We felt the least we could do was meet that need by providing facility space. To call the building condition fair would be an, uh, an, an understatement. Lots of flooding, a bad roof, bad AC, the restrooms I wouldn't let my enemy use, but just the, the renovation work that has gone on and just what they've been able to recreate in this building and refresh and give this building yet another life and another business and another organization using it is it's phenomenal and it's uh, beyond words. We did everything from electrical, HVAC. Oh, and we also had asbestos that we had to take care of. We found out about that. Structural bracing on the rear wall, new roof, fixing some ADA stuff outside, um, and then all the finishes. And it's just turned out to be a great process, great teamwork, and a very rewarding experience. Stan and Ashley, they just wanted to help. They were so grateful and excited for everything we were doing. That's a lot of work, Mama. <laughs> We would tell Stan, like, don't do that. We're gonna do that. And he's like, I wanna have equity in this. I wanna partner with you guys. I wanna be here, I wanna roll my sleeves up. I don't want anybody to look back on the project and say, you know, we weren't invested. We drew up the vision, but it was really cool to see it come to life because the ALC members were so knowledgeable of what needs to happen. You know, at times you struggle through with the project, you have fun, um, you laugh, you cry, you grow close with one another, and I think that that's it's, it's hard to do, and it's only something you would do otherwise over many, many years of relationship building. I, I would encourage anybody in the real estate industry to take advantage of this opportunity and try to be part, part of this class. I think it has just taken me to a next level, most both personally and professionally. The, the hope is, my hope is, is that all 30 of them find a passion that they didn't know they had because they didn't know that opportunity existed out there. In the next 20, 30 years, it's going to be up to people that are kind of in this age group right now to make the big decisions for the city of Dallas in the future. And the more that we can kind of make those connections early, I think the more we can do good for the city in the future. If I had to rank my beard versus Matt Ballard's, it's not even, that's not even a question. I was in Oz and you were there, and you were there. There, there there's a bug. <laughs> Did I get it? <laughs> <laughs>